In this video, I'm going to take a look at Python namespaces. We'll start off with this question, what are namespaces? It is a system that ensures the names in the program are unique and can be used without conflict. In the last video, we considered the following representation of a Python variable. Consider this program statement var underscore name is assigned 7. Under the hood of Python, what happens when this program statement executes is that we get an instance of the integer class that has the value of 7. This instance is then labelled with the identifier that was used in the Python program statement. Now, if you are unsure of this model that I've used to represent what goes on under the hood of Python, I recommend that you go back and look at the video before this one in the playlist. What we are looking at here in this schematic diagram is an instance of the integer class and when we use program statements that assign integers to identifiers as we can see in the program statement here we get an instance of the integer class. Now it's worth remembering that in Python everything is regarded as an object. For example a string, a list, a function, they're all examples of objects in the runtime of Python. This schematic diagram we can see for a variable at Python runtime is precisely that, a representation. It enables us to home in on the concepts behind what a variable is, this notion of an instance of the integer class that has a value and also is labelled to identify the object. Hopefully you will agree that this schematic model helps with understanding the runtime of a Python program and how everything is treated as an instance of a class. However, we should be asking how does Python organize the relationship between an identifier and the instance of a class that we're showing here with a label attached to that instance? The answer is it uses dictionaries. The relationship between an identifier and the object that it is identifying is implemented in Python as namespaces and these namespaces are organized using dictionaries. There is a name to object mapping with the name as a key and the object as a value. Let's consider this program statement again. var underscore name is assigned 7. Now on the previous slide we saw that this was an instance of the integer class that had a label attached to it. Now within Python what will happen when this program statement executes is that Python will set up a dictionary that I'm showing here. Into this dictionary will be placed the name of the variable. In this case you can see it's var underscore name. Associated with this identifier will be the instance of the integer class which I'm showing here with the value of 7 in the green area as you can see. Now because we have a dictionary here what we have to remember is that a dictionary will have a key and a dictionary has a value which means if you ever when you use a dictionary want to get at the value you have to go via the key and in this case this is the name this is the key now a dictionary is said to have a key to value mapping this is the key and that's the value and this key maps to this value here now if you're unsure about this and by that I mean if you're unsure on how dictionary works I recommend you go and locate the playlist on this channel and on the supporting website that covers dictionaries in a little bit more detail now the terminology key to value mapping is usually reserved for when we use dictionaries. In this case what we're using the dictionary for is to control the namespace which relates the identifier of the variable to the instance that represents the value of that variable. So when we consider key to value mapping, when we're talking about namespaces, it's usual to refer to the key as the name because that's the name of the variable, that's the identifier. And of course, the value that we've got when we talk in terms of dictionaries, we refer to as the object. So we have a name to object mapping. Now what that means is when you see this, this is the name and we have to realize 
that this is the value that's in the instance of, in this case, the integer class. So the terminology we use for namespaces is name to object. Bearing in mind that we have to realize that this is in a dictionary, so we often also hear it referred to as the key to value. But for namespaces, key to value, we put in name to object instead. But it kind of means the same thing. Let's consider this computer program, and you can see that we have four program statements. If we look to the first, we can see that it is saying first underscore number is assigned three, then we have second underscore number is assigned four, and on this line, we can see we're adding what's stored in these two variables together, and the result is going to be assigned to the variable result. Now, in order to keep track of the variables that appear in this program, Python will have created under the hood a dictionary and that dictionary as you can see here will have three entries now it has three entries because if you look at the program there are three variables first underscore number second underscore number and results and we have to remember that a dictionary is key to value mapping so what the dictionary will hold if we consider this line first it will hold the identifier of the variable here and of course the value of three that's being assigned to this will be here as an instance of the integer class we will then go on to this program statement and what this will have here is the identifier of the variable and of course here we'll have the integer object and of course this line here is going to add up what's stored in these two which we can see are the three and the four and it will assign that to the result so results will have an entry in the dictionary, as you can see here, and of course it will also reference the integer object that has the value of 7. So what we have got here is the identifier of the instance, and this is the identifier of the instance, and this is an identifier of the instance. And this first column we refer to as the names column, and this column holds the objects. Of course, when this program statement executes, we're going to get the output, as we can see here, of 7. Now, if we just concentrate on this program statement for a moment, we can see that we're going to be printing the result. And Python will now go to the dictionary, and it will look for this here. And it will find it in this position. And that position will then identify this, because if you remember, a dictionary is key to value. So if you want to get at this value, you have to go via the key. In other words, you've gone by the name to get at the object. Let's do a run through of this program to emphasize the points introduced in this video and look at the dictionary and how it is used to identify the various objects that appear within this computer program so we'll start off by looking at this line here first underscore number is assigned three now python will generate a dictionary and what's going to be put into the dictionary is this and you can see that this is the identifier and this is the instance of the integer so if i now wanted to get at this object here i would have to go via this identifier here which is an entry in the dictionary if i now come on to this line what it's going to do is to set up this and now you can see this is the identifier of the variable and this is the instance of the integer class that has the value of four because we can see here we were assigning four now when we come on to this line what you can see here we're adding up what's in first underscore number to what's into second underscore number now what this will do it'll go to the dictionary and it will find this and it will then have a mapping to this object so this three is effectively placed here in fact it will be sent to the arithmetic and logic unit but what this will do it'll gain access to this here in the dictionary which will in turn allow access to this because of this key to value within the dictionary the key to value relationship so that four is effectively put here and then we find the three plus the four is seven and that seven is assigned to this now of course result is another variable within the program and that will be added to the dictionary as we can see here there's the identifier and that's the instance of the integer with the value of seven 
So when this computer program executes, we can see that this is the setup of the dictionary and we know that this column is holding all of the keys and this column here is holding all of the values because with the dictionary we have key to value mapping. But of course, when we talk about namespaces, because what this really is representing, it's representing the namespace of this computer program here. There's a little bit more to it. We'll find there are other things in the namespace, but I'll be covering that in the next video. But instead of referring to the columns as keys and values, we can actually refer to them as names and objects, which is usual for referring to namespaces. So this dictionary is the namespace for this program. It contains all of the variables that this program uses organized in the dictionary that you can see in front of you. Now, of course, the program will go on to this line and you can see it's going to print the result. So the result, well, we go to this column and we look for the key, the name result, which is here. And of course, that allows us at the value, i.e. the object here and the seven is displayed as the output on the console. As you can see here, we get the output of seven. So we have this column holding the names and this column here holding the objects. And what we have a dictionary for is because it allows for quick access. So if I want to get that result, as I've done on this line, then you look in this column. It doesn't have to go to each column in turn looking for where the result is. It goes straight to this key, to this name, and locates this value, this object. So this is the namespace, and this column are the names, and these are the objects that exist in the namespace. Now, if we consider this computer program and look at the dictionary and look at this column, we can see that all of the objects are instances of the integer class. Now, it doesn't have to be like this. We don't have to have a program, as you will know, where everything is an integer. So the next program I'm going to look at now is going to have different types, and we'll see how the dictionary deals with that. Well, here's the computer program, and we can see there are three program statements, and we have got three variables, number underscore one, number underscore two, and my underscore string. And if we look at the first line, we can see that number underscore one is assigned five. This line, number underscore two, is assigned 3.142, and this line here is assigning hello to this here. Now, what we have when we run this program is a dictionary created just like the last one we saw. So if we look to the entries in this dictionary, we can see that this entry is created after this line executes, and this entry is created after this line executes, and this entry is created after this line executes. And if we consider the dictionary, these are the keys, these are the values, but of course when we're dealing with what is the namespace, it's usual to refer to these as names and objects. And if you look at the objects, you can see that this one is an instance of the integer class, and this one here, it's not holding an integer, it's holding a number with a fractional part, a decimal fractional part. That's an example of a float. And if we come down here, we can see this object holds a string. Now, we can therefore say that a dictionary holds everything in it, the names and the objects. And of course, the objects are instances in this case, not just of the integer class, but of other classes as well. And that's how namespaces work. They hold the objects and the objects can be instances of any class. They don't just have to be integers. They can be lists, for example. So for this computer program, this dictionary is the namespace. This here is the namespace for this computer program. So in other words, the identifiers, the names and the objects are stored together in a dictionary. So you can easily get at the objects, easily get at the values via the identifiers, i.e. the names that appear in this column. Before I finish this video, I've just made the statement that this is the namespace for this computer program. And that is more or less the case, except we will see that the actual namespace for this program 
contains more entries than you see here because every Python program will contain entries in the namespace that are put there by Python and that's what the next video is about. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.